This is Andy Perlwolf, Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're in Coventry and I'm joined by Matt Macklin. Matt, firstly, how are you? I'm good. It's not, like we were just saying uh, before you switch the camera on, it's nice to be uh, doing this show where we haven't got to, you know, travel down with days and days before and stay in hotels. We can just, uh, I can commute this from home. Uh, that is the one we're, I'm able to drive to and from as well. Can't wait for a show in Birmingham, Matt. No, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And I, I, and I think there will be one, uh, you know, not too distant future. You know, you look at Fraser Clark, Ben Whitaker, it makes sense to have shows in Birmingham. 100% hopefully that time does come, especially for us, so it makes life easier. But let's get on to the reason we're here in Coventry. Sky Sports Boxer putting on another show, Sam Eggington challenges for the IBO title. Uh, Matt, what do you make of a headline event? What do you know about Zisk? Not a lot, I know he's undefeated. Uh, he comes to fight from what the, a couple of clips I've seen of him. Um, I think it'll be an entertaining fight because nearly all Sam Eggington fights are entertaining. If he's got a guy who wants to stand there and have a fight with him, we're going to see a good fight. Um, and, and I'm happy for Sam that he's getting the main event sort of slot status build up because, you know, he's, he's paid his dues in a, in a tough, hard career. He's, you know, he's had his ups, he's had his downs, he's come again. You know, you've got to admire a guy like that. For Sam, he said to me previously, whereas this week he doesn't actually play in his mind, he said, but he hasn't had a rub of a green in some of those close decision losses. Will that play in his mind come fighting like that? Will he, he, want, his, will he want to force a stoppage so that he can take out of the judges' equation? No. Of course, he would like to, but also you don't want to focus on that, think about it too much, because you know when you look for the knockout, you tighten up, you load up, you get hit with shots, you know what I mean? It, it, it goes out, of, you, it goes to part, really. You know what I mean? You're better off relaxing and just boxing. And if the knockout comes, it comes, you know. And, and, and I think that's probably what he's trying to allure to, say, look, I just want to focus on the fight. Control the controllables. What the judges do or don't do is that your, you ain't got no say on that, really. The only, the only way you can influence that is by doing the business in the ring. And the best way you can do the business in the ring is to box your best. And the best way you'll do that is to relax. Yeah, be switched on, absolutely. You can't be lackadaisical, but you you know, you know don't want to be forcing things or trying too hard or looking for the knockout. That's when things go wrong. Matt, there's obviously a lot of kind of question marks over the legitimacy of the IBO title. If Sam wins on Saturday night, would you class him as a world champion? No, I, don't, I wouldn't. I'd class him as the IBO, well, he won the IBO version of a world title, which is probably, I don't know, a step up from European level, maybe. You know, do you know what I mean? It's look, there's four, but there's four recognised world titles, isn't that? And even sometimes they try and have a B version, or you know, a regular version, and it's just chaotic, really. You know, there's there's four re what would be considered bona fide world championship belts, and the IBO isn't one of those. That said. It, it does have status, if you know what I mean. Like, there's been some good. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's. it's um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recognise it as a, a bona fide world title now. Adam Azim returns to the ring, a very highly touted and talented prospect that everybody's excited to see once again. What are you hoping to see from him this time out, though, Matt? Just more of the same. He's, he's it's, it, little adjustments, little improvements. Um, so far, he's looked. Far too good for everyone he's boxed. And, um, you know, this is 10 rounds. We just want to see him keep developing, keep improving, and staying busy, getting out again because, you know, he's young he, he, and he's blasting these guys away. So, you know, he, 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 what, none of his last fights have been draining physically. So you want to see a guy like that box again pretty quickly after. And, he, and also, he's, he's grown into his style and his, you know, his reputation, his profiles, getting better, bigger and better. There's obviously been talk about a potential fight with Ryland Charlton, Matt. Do you feel that like that would be a good step beyond Saturday night for him? Yeah, definitely, because people know who Ryland Ryan Charlton is because he's boxed, he was in the fight camp, etc. So, and I think, I think, I think Adam is even probably blitz him, maybe just too fast, too sharp for him. Moving on, and away from this card, obviously a topic I'm sure you've been asked about so far today. Anthony Joshua announcing a long-term partnership with the Zone. Just as a man who's employed by Sky, what was your thoughts on seeing that news? Yeah, gutted, really, because you know we've, we've, we've uh, I've commentated on the last, so however many of Anthony's uh, fights, and there have been massive occasions, great events, great buzz being a part of it. You know, he always shows up, win, lose, or draw. 
it, you know, he's, he's, he, he gives it his all. Um, great guy to be around, great for the sport, brings a lot of attention and interest that other fighters don't. Uh, so gutted that, he, that, that he's not uh, with Sky anymore. That said, I, I don't knock any boxer that they've got to do what's best for them. You know, it's a short career uh, and they've got, to, they've got to get as much as they can while they can. And I'm sure it was a hard decision for him and he probably had to weigh a lot of things up about it. But, you know, good luck to him. What did you make of the finer details of the deal which was released to everybody about what was offered to Anthony Joshua? Oh, he's, a, he's become a shareholder now, he's become a brand ambassador for DAZN, amongst other things. What did you make of all of those minor details that we are saying minor, but the finer details rather that we have? Well, they're probably trying to make it... Uh, they, 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 I'm guessing from, from that, that it was sold to him and like, look, it's a tough fight, you know, you, you lost the last one. You know, we hope you win this one, but you could lose it. And, but if you do, you know, you're still going to have this, this and this, future interests. So he's probably, he's probably looking at it, the bigger picture. He's trying to look at long term, what's best for him. Not just what's the most money for this one particular fight, because I don't know what they offered him in, in terms of guarantee, etc. But I know Sky put a big, a big, uh, a good, strong offer in and it's hard. You know, Sky generate that pay, Sky pay per view. It's proven, tested. It generates a lot of money, so it, it must have been substantial from the zone. But I think also, I think the deciding factor was probably those other things, making him a shareholder, brand ambassador, all that sort of stuff. Matt, just listening to your answer there about AJ potentially looking at the longevity of what was on offer from the zone. If Usyk beats AJ again, do you think AJ would consider retirement? I think he would, yeah. It, it depends on the manner of the defeat, doesn't it? You know, if it was a really close fight, they might do it again. You know, if it was, um, you know, it was a really close fight, but Usyk goes into the undisputed with fury, he may well think, you know what? Oh, first fight with Robert Garcia, we nearly got there. Do you know what? Let's do Dillian. Let's do the Dillian White rematch, or let's do whoever. Do you know what I mean? I, I want that again. It, you know, he may feel be re-motivated and, and want it and he might think, you know what, I just need more time with Robert Garcia, that was a good move, blah, blah, blah. But it depends on the manner of the defeat. Like, where if he gets comprehensively out box, beaten up and stopped in seven or eight rounds, does he want to box? He, I don't, you know, you don't know then, do you? He might not have the, the desire anymore with so much money and everything in the bank. Will he have the desire to go through all that again? Don't know. What do you make of a Robert Garcia link up? Uh, I think decent move, good move. I think uh, I think Robert Garcia, very good boxing, good very good trainer, and I think style wise, mindset wise, how he sees boxing, I think he'll he'll be definitely sort of um, you know he'll be trying to make sure that Joshua's aggressive in the fight, that he's physical, that he that he imposes himself, that he boxes to his strengths. You know, look, he, Joshua's not going to outbox. Usyk, you know what I mean? Usyk's a master at that distance, in and out type thing, faints, all that stuff. It, it, that, 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 that's not, he can't beat him doing that. So he's got to get, in, get, get, he's got to get up close, he's got to close the distance, he's got to get on top of him, he's got to impose himself. And I think Garcia will be good at training him how to do that. Just a couple of things I want to get your thoughts on, Matt. I'm sure you saw the viral video of Julius Francis taking out... Uh, I don't really know what to call him, uh, the word idiot has been bandied about by others today, so we'll just use that one. Um, at Box Park, what was your thoughts on that video of it? I thought he was well within his rights. I thought the guy, he was doing the security there. The guy was bouncing around the place, aggressive. He threw a punch at the, the one guy. Um, you know, and, and then he's approached Julius, lifted his hand up, and Julius has just cracked him. Still got it. He got it, you know. He's an ex-boxer, isn't he? You know what I mean? Of course, he's still got it, you know. Yeah. But I think every, I think you know, everyone stood behind him, haven't they? The box park people have backed him. The police have said, "Yeah, we've seen it." Self, you know. But the, the, the guy was causing havoc, wasn't he? Final thing: Tommy Fury has announced he signed his end of the deal to face Jake Paul, August sixth, I believe, is the date. Just your your thoughts now that it seems to be there. I mean, I'm not that mad on them fights, you know. That I'm boxing. I'm a boxing guy. Do you know what I mean? The YouTube and all that. I don't. I don't. Do you take more of an interest now, though, because Jake Paul's actually fighting Tommy, who 
sees himself as an, a professional boxer. Yeah, I, I will watch it. Do you know what I mean? When, when it comes along, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll definitely watch it. Um, but you know, I'm not. You know, it doesn't get my juices flowing. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't get into debate or conversation. It's just yeah, I'll watch it. That's it, like type thing. Right, mate. We will leave that there now, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate your time as always. Thanks for speaking to me in Boxer Social. All right, cheers, Andy.